everybody, it's Jackie with ABC Creations. I'm bringing to you another video today that I was asked to do by a Redline uh, group member. And it is to show how I embroidered on the Sherpa blankets that I did. However, I don't have any Sherpa blankets, but I did get a customer order for these beautiful polyester blankets. So I'm going to go ahead and show you today uh, basically what I do to set up and how I hoop these uh, blankets. And... It's fairly simple. I use the red line hoops that come with the machine, the round hoop. This is this uh, the C hoop um, that came with the machine. Nothing special. I am using the um, Joanne Pellin Tearaway as well as the water soluble wash away on top. And I'm also going to be showing you the uh, hooping station that I received from John Deere when I purchased my red line as part of the promotion. So basically what I'm going to do here now is take the hoop and I'm going to use my magnets to hold it in place. Uh, the board and the hooping station, the Akita hooping station is actually a magnetic board, which is amazing. Works really well with the Mighty Hoops as well. And all I'm going to do is just place my tearaway now on top of the hoop. And also use the magnets to hold it in place. Uh, very simple, very easy. Uh, it just kind of keeps everything, you know, from moving on me while I'm trying to get my placement correct and accurate. For this exact blanket, I told the customer I would be doing it in the corner with the tag. She wanted it in a corner. I said the best corner would probably be the one with the tag. So for lining this up, I tried to... Um, it's a little bit difficult because of these little palms on the right hand side so what I tried to do is imagine a seam like the left side and then just try to center in you know the uh, middle of the triangle where my placement should be in the hoop um, so you'll see me kind of maneuvering the fabric making sure that everything is you know nice and centered the way I like it um, making sure it, eyeball it looks pretty good you can actually measure uh, with the measuring tape or a ruler, whatever, you know, you're comfortable with if you need it exact. And then I'm going to take my water soluble and I just place it on top. And what this is going to do is it's going to create uh, two things. One, it's going to create the fabric from shifting and it's also going to uh, hold down the fibers. Now, if you notice, the notch for the hoop is usually on the left or the right hand side facing up. For this example, the reason that I am hooping this with the left side or hooping it with the left side facing down is simply because when I put this blanket into the machine, I'm actually going to hoop it upside down. And the reason I'm going to do this is because if I try to hoop this the way that it normally would be with the uh, hoop going in with the latch to the left, the issue that I would have at this point is that the blanket would have to hang over the back side and the pantograph of the machine, and I don't want to do that. So I'm actually going to reverse my design, um, or I should say, you know, flip it upside down. And for the blanket, I'm going to make sure that the blanket is also backwards. So when I'm looking at this design, it's going to stitch upside down in front of my face. So here, I'm just trying to tighten the hoop down to make sure that the uh, blanket and the water soluble and the tearaway don't move in the hoop. And then I simply lift it off of my Akita station, the hooping station, and I just check the hoop again to make sure it's nice and snug, and again, tighten down the bracket to make sure that there is no movement. Next, I'll be showing you all how I prepare my machine, as well as uh, run the machine with the design. Okay, guys, we're here at the machine, and as you can see, the blanket is fully hooped and ready to go. And this is the reason that I wanted to show you guys that the um, blanket is hooped reversed and the image is uh, flipped or upside down. This is so that the blanket can hang off of the front of the machine and not hang over the back where the pantograph is. And it doesn't create any unnecessary uh, weight or possibility of the blanket uh, catching on anything. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up the design on the machine screen. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, three flower icon and I'm going to tap that. Then I will go to the floppy disk and I'm going to choose the USB port uh, when it comes up on the screen. Select my design on the floppy disk and I'm going to uh, hit OK. And then I will choose the flower folder with the arrow next to what looks like the recycling arrows. And then I'm going to, I'm going to press OK. 
And as you can see on my screen, it is uh, up. I want to use the seventh color, so I'm going ahead and changing my color to uh, needle number seven or spool number seven in the design setup. If you're not familiar with this, let me know and I can always walk you through at any point. It's basically under the uh, multi-needle icon uh, once you click on it. So here you'll just see that I'm setting up my colors, uh, at least the first few based on you know what I have on the actual machine. And since I know I only really need number six for the whole name, I'm just gonna you know go ahead and proceed through with the design. Now I know everything is set up okay there. Um, I like to keep my needle on needle number one when I do my trace. So I was making sure needle is on number one and here I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the hoop is correct for the C hoop. Under the arrows, you can click it and click on hoop settings to make sure your hoop is right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and center the design or center the hoop. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run a trace. I always trace my designs before I do anything. So I slightly hold down my hoop needle number one and I go ahead and say yes, trace the outline. And my needle is going to run all the way along the inside of my hoop if I have fit centered correctly. Um, I do not recommend pulling your needle all the way down. If you do this and it does hit the hoop, um, it'll let out a really loud grinding and it'll stop the entire machine. Now the machine's gonna go ahead and shift to the needle that I want it to stitch with. And um, basically we're good to go. I know it's not gonna hit. I did make a mistake right here and I left my machine on um, manual stitching forward without actually stitching. So I had to stop and actually uh, go backwards through the whole um, design back to start. And I had to um, reset the design basically and then tell it to actually stitch. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here. I do apologize for the error in my video. I am human. And uh, here we go. So moving forward, all you will see is how I stitch this design and then I'll show you at the end. Enjoy. All right, everybody, it looks like the machine is just about done here. I hope you enjoyed watching that little video clip of the machine seamlessly uh, stitching. I always enjoy watching it as it, you know, finishes off. So I'm just adjusting the camera here so that you can see when I take it off the hoop and what it looks like. And then I'll go ahead and show you the final processor step of what I do, which is just to unlatch the machine uh, hoop from the machine. This is the finished product. I think it looks amazing and wonderful. The water soluble did a great job at holding the fibers down. And I specifically love this Pellin water soluble stabilizer. It uh, actually just tears right off from the machine or from the fabric and the material that you're using. And then you can see how clean and beautiful the back stitching is on this as well. So I just loosen up my hoop, remove it from uh, the garment, take my tear away and just lightly tear it off from the entire design, uh, as you can see. And then in the front, I do the exact same with this water soluble. It just tears right off with such ease. I love using this stuff. If there's anything left behind, I just let my customers know that we've, you know, done our best to remove it, but we didn't want to ruin the garment or take our chances with wetting it or washing it so that they understand that the um, materials used are high quality and that they can just basically uh, wash the garment and it'll disappear without any trace. So 
So I do lightly try to pick out some of the um, tearaway or stabilizers in between letters, but otherwise looks pretty good. I really hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or you'd like to see anything else, please subscribe below and drop me a comment. Thanks!